Hello. It's another video. And the reason for this video is because the last video that I did was a real Debbie Downer. And I was feeling, like, really low. Perhaps maybe I was on the, on the bounce back to feeling a bit better. But, yeah, I was in a bad place. And the comments that were left really helped me, you know, take a step back, look. And they've actually given me the comfort that I was looking for. So I didn't need it you know, necessarily from my wife or from the kids or somebody face to face. Those comments that were left and the message that I, messages that I received, you know, I had a few chats with a few people and it really made me feel a lot better. So this is an update video. Let's rock and roll. So CBD. What have I done? What have I tried to change to make my CBD experience more positive. So I am still using CBD and when I did the last video I was using CBD. So I've got two vape pens. I've got the red and the silver and I was just using the silver one which just had CBD in with my nicotine e-liquid but it constantly had a feed of CBD. So what I've been doing is I've been using this red one which has just my nicotine e-liquid, which I have used since I quit smoking, like, August 2016, that was. Jeez. So, yeah. Year and a half ago, I quit smoking, and I've been using this, so I still use this. But what I've noticed is, I use this up until about 4, 5 p.m. In fact, it's half 4 now, so I should perhaps <laughs> start on the other. But no. Because I notice a pattern with my own anxiety, or the sensations, maybe I don't feel anxious, but I notice sensations more in the afternoon, usually. I don't know whether that's just a psychological thing or what it is, but it happens. So what I've been doing, I've been using the CBD from 5pm-ish, and for the rest of the evening, and it's just helped me unwind. You know, I finish work, I switch the computer off, and I go and sit and watch TV and have dinner. And it's just allowing me to relax a little. I'm assuming it's the CBD. I don't know. I, I genuinely don't know whether it is or not. But I can only attribute the way that I've been feeling on the evenings has been a lot more positive. I had a bit of a wobble the other night. I was just sitting watching TV. And I was using the CBD thing. And I just I allowed it to just pass. I recognised that I was feeling sensations. Just sitting on the sofa watching TV. And it just... I don't know, without reacting, without adding any more fear to the re like questioning, trying to reason why I was feeling this way. It was the swaying crap that we get, or I get. So I was sitting on the sofa and I could just feel myself. I was noticing every motion, every movement that I was making. And that's a thing that's given me grief for a long time. But I just sat with it and just rode it out. And believe it or not, eventually my mind just... I don't know, it just switched off from those feelings, so it wasn't affecting me anymore. Whether it was still happening, I don't know. But the the fact is that I wasn't conscious of any motion anymore, so that was decent. And it's taken me nearly four minutes to tell you that. So that's pretty good. So the CBD experience, I haven't knocked it on the head. I am still using it, but I'm really regulating when I use it. I'm not using it during the day in the mornings especially, because I was waking up and using it instantly, and it was giving me kind of that foggy, depersonalised feeling, which nobody really wants. So although I wasn't feeling anxiety, I was also not feeling pretty much anything. I just felt completely d detached, and that's what I said in the last video. So, during the past week, I have done a few things. What I'm doing at the moment, I'm selling my car, so my car is on the internet for sale, and yesterday I have people come round and look at the car, and you would think that I would feel anxious while I'm standing there talking to them, because I'm actually trying to sell something as well, so it's like, there is that little bit of added pressure, but I was absolutely fine. Um, so nothing to report there, unfortunately, or fortunately for me. Um... I've also been looking at other cars to buy, so during this past week I've been to Birmingham to look at a vehicle, I've also been to Sutton, which are two places not too far away from me, but you know, far enough, they're not my local town. And obviously you've got the added pressure of getting to the destination, having to get out the car, 
pretend you know what you're doing, looking around the car, talking to the person that's selling it, going for a test drive. And I've done that twice in the past week and had, I won't say no, but very little anxiety while I've been doing that. So that's been a real positive as well. One big thing for me, and I'm going to share a bit of footage from Wednesday um, in a minute, so I'll cut to the clips, but I had a business meeting. So those of you who know or don't, I'm a web designer, self-employed, have been for like eight years, I think, something like that. And for the past 12 months or so, I've not had any business meetings, because any customer that contacts me and says, can we meet to discuss the project, I always come up with excuses, so I'll either say, I'm far too busy, or like, can we not do this over email, or over phone, or whatever. And some customers, and it's through no fault of their own, just want to meet the person that's going to be delivering their website. You know, these things can cost a fair bit of money, so people want to see who's going to be doing the work for them. So this guy wanted to meet, and I said, yeah, okay. I was feeling okay at the time that I was on the phone, so I just said, yeah, let's do this Wednesday. So, Wednesday came, and I was feeling edgy, but I'm going to share the footage, because it will explain it better than I'm going to now, because it was two days ago, and I can't remember what happened five minutes ago. So, here you go, here's a bit of footage from me just before the geezer was supposed to arrive, it was like half an hour before, so, cut. So, for about the past 12 months, anybody that's asked for a meeting regarding web design, any customers that have got in touch and asked, can we come and see you? The answer has always been either I'm busy or there hasn't been an answer and I've just completely ignored any customers that have asked for a meeting. So the other week, or it was earlier this week, I spoke to this customer, wanted to come and see me, spoke to him on the phone and I was feeling okay at the time that I spoke to the guy. So yeah, I agreed. Let's do it. Well, he's now five minutes away from being at my house and... It's mad because, like, anxiety, the sensations, the physical weird stuff has started, and I know that it's that. And it was about 20 minutes ago that it first started. Like, my legs started feeling a bit weaker. I was concentrating on how I was breathing. I was just feeling out of sorts. Just, you know, constantly questioning. It's like you become instantly sensitised when there's something that you've got to do or something that you can't get out of or something that you think... Because you don't know, but you think is going to make you uncomfortable. So, I've got a snotty nose. I've got a freaking hat on, which I will reverse for the meeting. It looks a bit better. I'm a yuppie. Oi, oi. Let's see how it goes, man. He's due here, like I say, any minute now. And when the door knocks, I don't know. Fight or flight. I might just fight him. <laughs> I'll let you know how it goes. He doesn't intend on staying too long. I've had a busy, a pretty busy week actually. Not felt as bad, you'll be pleased to know for anybody that watched the last video. Not felt as bad as I was previously. And I'll perhaps tell you a little more after the meeting. Okay, so we're three minutes on and there is still no sign. I don't know whether I'm feeling better or whether I'm just like the nearer that it's getting it becomes a case of not being able to feel anxious. I don't know how many people could relate to that, maybe, that you feel really anxious when you know that it's upcoming, maybe half an hour before or whatever, but then when it's a couple of minutes before, the anxiety then retreats a bit, and you don't feel as bad because you're more focused on, like, I really can't screw this up. I don't want to look like a complete idiot, but I do look like a complete idiot, let's face it. But the fact is that I'm going to be talking to a complete stranger for the next, I don't know, 20 minutes, half an hour. Yes, I'm in the comfort of my own home, but it's still like, I don't know, do you put the front on? Do you open up? If you feel weird, do you mention it? All these questions that we all probably go through when we have similar situations to this, although there's probably not that many people that have maybe business meetings. But the fact that it's at home is a big positive, I guess, so I need to just shut up and get on with it. And I will <laughs> let you know how it goes, if it goes. Here we go again. He's just arrived, man. I see the car pull up out front. <sighs> Breathe. I was just thinking, like, should I get a drink or 
What shall I do? What can I do to prepare myself? Grab the pack of mints, grab a bottle of water. I don't know. And then the car pulled up and I was like, oh. There's the door, in a bit. So, you could see that I was feeling crazy sensations, like just before the guy came, 20 minutes, 15 minutes before he was due to arrive, I was getting the jelly legs, I was really focusing on like the amount that I was moving, like swaying, the motion sensations, not really dizziness, but, you know, not feeling a-okay as I was like 45 minutes before the geezer was supposed to arrive, it was mad how quick it came on, as soon as I got into my head like we're approaching the time. And then the sensation started, but it was mad because I just rode straight through them. And then just before the guy arrived, it just all went out the window. And I don't mean in a bad way, like the negative stuff went out the window. And the geezer came in and we shook hands and sat down and started talking about the project. And he was here for like an hour and five minutes, I think. And the time just flew by. It was ridiculous. And we got on and everything was great and we had a lot in common. And it was mad. And like to think that I've put those things off for so long because of fearing how I'm going to feel when they're happening. And there was a few moments during the meeting where I'd, I didn't feel anything, but I was thinking it. Like maybe this is where I should be anxious now or where is it? Why aren't I feeling it? And it was crazy because it just weren't happening. And it's unusual because usually when I have those thoughts, that's usually the start of the cycle. But no. I was able to keep a, a complete control and a lid on any of the feelings. And it weren't as if I was consciously trying to. I was just immersing myself in what I was actually supposed to be doing. So I don't know. There's no rhyme or reason to this. I can't say that it's like gradual exposure because I haven't had meetings to get used to it. I just thought, fuck it. I'm going to go for it. And I made the decision on Wednesday. Did I? No, I didn't. I made the decision when he called to... a the meeting on Wednesday, so I'd already said, yes, we're doing it. There was no getting out of it, so it was just, let's ride it and see what happens. And not adding fear. Not adding fear to those initial flashing fears and those initial sensations that I was experiencing. So that was pretty good. Bit of an eye-opener. Made me feel good. Made me feel a bit more confident in maybe talking to people. And then, as I say, yesterday I had somebody look at the car, so that was the day after the meeting, and I was outside talking to this couple about my car for like half an hour um with very little anxiety maybe a little bit of the jelly leg stuff but that's just it is what it is i can't stop it but i don't have to be scared of it that's the point so since the last video as well i have had my appointment come through for my ecg thing the echocardiogram or whatever it is a scan for this heart thing this heart condition and that's on the 5th of april and those of you who know me, I don't do Aprils. I did a video last year called I Don't Do Aprils. And that's because on the 1st, it's the anniversary of my mum passing away. On the 3rd, it is my wedding anniversary, which always creates stress. Because I feel pressured into going to do something. And I do want to. I want to take my wife out for dinner, of course. Or go and stay in a hotel or whatever. But it's just anxiety usually makes that stressful. And then... And a, the anniversary of my wife's grandma passing away is also in April, and April's just, yeah. And on the 5th now, I've got to contend with this as well, so we'll see how that goes, but we ain't in April yet. We've got two weeks, so just chill out. Also, so this is the big one, and this is where we're going to end the video. Um, I've said it so many times before that the one thing that really stresses me out about anxiety, the one thing that I regret, and feel guilt about is not being able to go wa watch my daughter dance this weekend she has a dance festival she did last weekend as well but this weekend I have made a commitment to myself to my daughter to my wife and now I'm making it to you everybody that watches this video I won't say all the subscribers because for some reason they don't watch the freaking videos but hey ho I'm making a commitment now to say that on Sunday morning I will be attempting to go to my daughter's dance festival to go into the theatre and to watch her perform her ballet solo at 9.30 on Sunday morning. 
Whether it happens, how far I get, I just don't know. But I'm going to attempt, and I'm 99% sure that I will go in there, and I will... Yeah, I will. I will make it. I will do it, and I will go and friggin' watch this dance, because it's probably been like two, three years, perhaps. Because the last time that I did it, I had a panic attack in the theatre, and they wouldn't let me out, because somebody was dancing at the time, so... I had to ride it out, and it was rough. Really rough. And since then, that's why I haven't been since. So this will be my first attempt. Um, and the reason that I'm telling you that is because I don't want to back out of it. I want that pressure. I want to anticipate. Just like I did with the meeting, when the geezer phoned and I said, yeah, let's do it Wednesday. I'm doing that now. I'm saying, yeah, let's do this Sunday. And we're going to do it. And we're going to see how it goes. And I'm hopefully going to video what I can. I'm not allowed to video in the theatre, but I'm tempted to do maybe some kind of sound recording so I can maybe tell you how I'm feeling, if there's any wobbles or whatnot. But that's it. I have a plan, and I'm going to put it into action, and I'm going to try and have a nice weekend, and I hope you do too. And Sunday morning, we shall see. So that's it from me today. This is the update. I didn't want to end and leave the last video on my channel to be that real negative Nancy, droopy, Debbie, downer... I'm not going to swear. That's it. I'm out for today. Thank you for watching. I will keep you posted. The next video on this channel will be of me getting to the dance place. It will be of me perhaps walking in there and then either leaving via ambulance or stretcher or of my own free will with a big cheesy smile on my face. Ta-da!